Hello students! Welcome to Math and Magic. For this video, I will discuss sets and its types. According to George Cantor, the founder of set theory, set is a well-defined collection or gathering together in a whole of distinct objects also known as elements. Let's put it this way. Say your teacher asks you which of the following does not belong to the group. Mr. Emilio Aguinaldo, Mr. Diosdado Macapagal, Mrs. Corazon Aquino, Mrs. Gloria Arroyo, Mr. Rodrigo Duterte, or Mr. Christopher Coronado. Obviously, five of these people are presidents of the Philippines, except one. That is Mr. Christopher Coronado. So observe that in this given example, it has a specific category. That is presidents of the Philippines. So it's easy for us to identify which is different. This makes the collection well defined. Another example, which of these animals do not belong to the group? Duck, ostrich, kangaroo, lion, or swan? If your answer is lion, you're correct. Lion because it has four legs, while the rest of the animals are two-legged. Now, can you identify which of the following sets are well-defined? We have set of popular actors, set of math teachers in HRS, set of vowel letters, set of beautiful women in Asia, and set of positive integers less than 5. Here, the sets which I highlighted green are well-defined. Those are math teachers in HRS, vowel letters, and positive integers less than 5. They are well-defined because we can easily identify its elements. We know that the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Positive integers less than 5 are 4, 3, 2, and 1. Meanwhile, for sets that contains popular actors and beautiful women in Asia are not well defined because these are based on perceptions. What seems to be popular or beautiful to some might not be for others. Again, there should be a particular criteria or category for a set to be well defined. Now, sets are conventionally denoted with capital letters and can be written in two ways. One is roster method, also known as listing method, and the other one which is rule method or set builder notation. In roster method, each element of the set is listed and enclosed in braces. Say for example, set A is a set of positive add integers less than 10. So writing this in roster form, set A contains the elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Another example, set B is a set of major subjects in high school. Writing this in roster form, set B will contain the elements English, Mathematics, Science, Filipino, and Social Studies. On the other hand, for rule method, we need to define the rules for membership. So we typically write this in the form set of all x such that x is blank. Going back to sets a and b, set a be equal to x such that x is a set of positive add integers less than 10. For set b, it will be set b be equal to x such that x is a set of major subjects in high school. After knowing the different ways of defining sets, let us now go to its types. So this includes finite and infinite sets, universal set and null set, equal and equivalent sets, joint and disjoint sets, and lastly, subsets. We say that a given set is finite if it has countable number of elements or cardinality. If it does not, the set is said to be infinite. So the following are examples of finite sets. Set A that is composed of months that starts with J. So elements are January, June, and July. Its cardinality is 3. Set B 
composed of female presidents of the Philippines. Elements are Mrs. Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and Mrs. Corazon Aquino. Thus, the cardinality of set B is 2. Conversely, for infinite sets, examples are set Y, which is a set of stars in the sky. Remember that we cannot count the number of stars in the sky since those are too many. Another infinite set is the set of integers greater than 1. So we know that it could extend up to positive infinity. As a hint, when you see three consecutive dots, that is ellipses and red as and so on and so forth, uh, more likely the set is said to be infinite. Now, can you identify which of these are finite and infinite sets? Very good! Set B, which is the set of whole numbers less than 10, and set C, which is the set of days in a week that starts with T, are both finite sets. While set A, the set of positive multiples of 5, and set D, set of negative integers, are all infinite sets. After knowing the difference between finite and infinite sets, let us now proceed to the next two types, the universal and null sets. The set that contains all elements being considered in a specified setting is called the universal set. It is commonly denoted by the symbol U. Meanwhile, the set that does not contain any element is called the empty set or the null set. These are the two symbols that were commonly used to denote a null set. We have braces with no elements in between and the symbol for null. So as an example, say set U or the universal set contains all the lowercase letters in the English alphabet. For null set or empty set, Say set W contains all positive integers less than 0. Since every positive integer is greater than 0, set W is an example of an infinite set or there will be no element for this set. Now, can you identify which of these is universal set and null set? Very good! The set of months in a year is a universal set, while the set of add numbers divisible by 2 is for null set. Remember that add numbers are the numbers which are not divisible by 2. After knowing what is universal set and null set, let us now proceed to equal and equivalent sets. Two sets are said to be equal if they have exactly the same elements, just like in the given sets R and S. Set R contains the elements in the word name. Those are N-A-M-E. While set S contains the letters in the word mean. M-E-A-N. Notice that in these two sets, although the arrangement is different, the elements are exactly the same. So we consider this set as equal. On the other hand, two sets are equivalent if they have the same number of elements which are different from the other elements. So in equivalent sets, number of elements are the same, but the elements are different. Sets T and U are examples of these sets. Set T contains the vowel letters in the English alphabet, those are A, E, I, O, U, while set U contains the first five positive integers, those are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Notice that each element in these two sets are different, but the number or cardinality is the same. Both sets T and U has five elements. Therefore, these sets are equivalent. Also take note that equal sets are also equivalent sets. Now for joint and disjoint sets, two sets are said to be joint if those sets contain at least one common element. Sets E and F below are examples of joint sets. Set E with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the first 5 counting numbers, while set F has elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 or the first 5 positive add numbers. Notice that in these two sets, 3 and 5 are common on both. So illustrating this using a Venn diagram, 
we have two sets which are joined. In contrary with this concept, these joint sets are sets which do not have common elements. Just like sets Y and Z. Set Y contains the first 7 positive add integers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, while set Z has the elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, which are the first 7 positive even integers. So as you can see, there is no common element in both sets. Illustrating this in a Venn diagram, the graphs did not coincide or overlap. Lastly, for subsets, if every element of any set, say set A, is also an element of another set, say set B, then we say that set A is a subset of set B. That is denoted by A is contained in B. As an example, say set A has the elements 5, 10, 15, and 20. While set B has the elements 5, 10, 15, and 20. So that means that set A is a subset of set B since all of the elements in set A are also found in set B. You may also use this symbol which means superset. So in this example, we can say that B is a superset of set A. Now if set A is a subset of set B but not equal to set B, then A is a proper subset of set B. That can be illustrated by this Venn diagram. As you can see, there are elements of B that are not in set A. So A is a proper subset of B. As an example, say set A has the elements mathematics, English, and science. While set B has the elements English, mathematics, Science, Araling Panlipunan, and Filipino. Here, notice that Araling Panlipunan and Filipino are not elements of set A. So here, we can say that set A is a proper subset of set B. Another way of expressing this is set B is a proper superset of set A. So to generalize, a set is a collection of well-defined objects. Its proponent is George Cantor. A set can be written in two ways. Those are roster or listing method and rule method or set builder notation. Also, set has nine types. Those are finite, infinite, universal, null, equal, equivalent, joint, disjoint, and subsets. Thank you for watching. God bless.